I think the best way of describing it is everything comes from, from drawing and my interest in drawing, but not drawing in a sense of sort of fine art, but drawing as a sort of communication tool. So things that come from advertising, from illustration, that's the inspiration in a way. So I think, you know, things that it's drawing as a vehicle for communicating something and that's got a very different intention. So it quotes the language of that type of activity. So essentially it allows you to take familiar tropes and use them as a sort of mechanism of the work so a lot of it does that so as you can see I think in the work it has that thing it's come off the page or it's been upscaled but in upscaling it haven't changed things about the way it's drawn or uh, the line work looks so you've got that thing that there's that consistency from that original language that allows you to access it using the same tools of understanding so I think for me it's that that thing that you can set something up and you um, invite people in by something that, you know, it's drawing something that everybody does. It's almost, you know, that kind of drawing feels a bit closer to handwriting or something. It's something that people do with less uh, self-consciousness. And I think that people feel sort of unnerved, but in a good way, yes. uh, or slightly wrong-footed by it. But I think it then allows you to set up some interesting questions. It's, it's a bit like... Uh, some of the editorial cartoonists that I like. You, it allows you to to do something that's to do with satire, but the, the the language of the cartoon means that your intention's in there, but somehow you get away with a bit more. So I think in Bath, particularly in this location, it's a, a way of me playing some games with things to do with, with Bathness, whatever yes. that is, and yes. the history of Bath. Um, so I think in the three sort of scenarios that I've set up, through the garden and in the museum. That's the, the core intention and that's something that's always run through the work, particularly in the last few years, is this rhetorical gesture. Can you make work about making work or can you make work about what it is to show work? So I think those um, are kind of the key features of it, I suppose. Uh, you can draw and you can certainly talk. Uh, what you were saying, I think, is, is very true. It's something very familiar in an unfamiliar setting. But now look, this was a special commission for mm -hmm. the Holborn. Uh, you have three set interventions. Yep. What was your inspiration for what you've done here? Well, I think, uh, you know, knowing what I know about Bath and the museum and, and then also, you know, working with the, cur the team here and Will who, who curated it, that, you know, the, it, you begin to think about what bits of the history do you want to play some games with and I think in this instance um, the dig you know Roman bath or is one of the games you could play um, but I think deliberately an anachronistic stuff is quite interesting to insert so in the dig behind me we've got um, something that quotes a Roman road but at the same time we've got a medieval tomb slab we've got a plastic bottle we've got a telephone it's always a bit wrong you know so the people are hapless they're sort of fallible and I think it's quite nice to put sort of something that's error strewn or fallibility into the thing it's quite human and it, again it allows you to get away with a bit more kind of risky commentary almost and that's a good thing to to do in a museum like this but it's that approach as well if you the first thing you do when you're trying to do a project is you know get a sense of the place but also this approach up the front lawn is quite spectacular at the end of the street so doing something that feels like you're uncovering things um that to do with what a continuation of Great Portney Street or something is it was one of my first thoughts and you know thinking about digging up Richard III in the car park or whatever it's that sort of concept um, and then of course in the front the, the, the exhibition sign is because um, looking back on the sort of Friends of Museum website and, and digging back into the imagery there there was a sign at one time I think 1950s that said exhibition right across the front I thought it was quite strange because it's it's a word that sort of describes what might be happening in there, but it doesn't really tell you anything at the same time. So it's this sort of big statement, but it's also a little bit empty at the same time. And then again, a bit like a, a kind of gag set up. I wanted the idea that the guy was a, making a beautiful bit of sign writing, but it got to the end and missed out a word. And it's a bit, for me, that's about scale because I draw everything at a tenth of the size. And it's that thing of, if you're doing a very focused, concentrated activity, that's the kind of thing that can happen, something that's really important to the interpretation or the success of the thing. But um, you're, you're focused on 
the technique for something, you know, what you're doing with the paintbrush or, or whatever. So that hapless sign writer is arriving on the last letter form, but has missed one out halfway along. And already, you know, people in, in, in Bath are responding to it in really curious ways and saying, oh, you've missed out an eye. And, you know, almost a bit concerned for the museum as if the museum can't organise a sign that says <laughs> exhibition. So it's been really funny already. I love it. Then there is one intervention in the ballroom. That's right. What we did in the ballroom is, is a bit like projects that I've done before. I like to build an environment. So in this one, uh, it's a very much a kind of pharaoh and ballish type thing is happening. We're trying to do a thing that's a sort of uh, paint advert for... Um, a kind of Regency paint colour and so what we did is build a thing that looks a bit like a film set but it's a big drawing and it's populated by people in costume and people who are you know camera people uh, sound recording people um, and they're again they're sort of trying and possibly failing to make this advert happen and very much like the dig there's lots of deliberately anachronistic stuff in the drawing so if you kind of uh, scrutinise what's happening on the walls you see all these things that don't quite fit so again it's thinking about the, mu the consistency of a museum or in a collection like this and the Holborn its core collection has quite a curious mixture of things so in a way I've brought 20th and 21st century things into it as well so you get this kind of doubling up of the almost the confusion that's going on so I think it's, it'll be interesting it's really animated by people so when people come into this environment they're going to be wrong footed they're almost seeing the back of it first and thinking you know what the hell is this doing in our museum is maybe the first thought <laughs> and then hopefully they're sort of disarmed and begin to I guess unpick what's happening in it. Art uh, can certainly be awesome mm -hmm. um, it's nice to see humour being brought mm. into this as well and I was saying earlier about how sculpture you tend to uh, uh, approach with a sense of a sense of awe, mm -hmm. very often it's elevated. Yeah. Um, you've taken something that's very familiar off the page and put it in an unfamiliar situation. But um, are you pleased that people are coming here, uh, looking at this and ending up with a smile on their face? Yeah, I think it's the things that are at a human scale, quite literally, you know, the, the figures. And I think that's something that you, um, when you're admiring artwork it's usually one or the other either it's something very small and sort of richly detailed and you think oh blimey that must be a really tiny paintbrush and hugely labour intensive or it's a huge monumental sculpture and probable scale and this is it's kind of weird to do something in between it's people are just the size of people and I think that's already compels people to think you know what when I'm moving about in here or near these sculptures I'm sort of in the picture as well and it becomes quite interesting like that and I, that's something that I like to do. So I think the humour for me is super important. I, I think there's, there's nothing wrong with making work that has at least as one of its sort of intentions um, to disarm people but also make uh, something that's quite kind of user friendly in the sense that at least on the surface it's pretty user friendly, it's quite accessible and that I think for me that's not necessarily particularly common so to do it here um, hopefully we change a little bit the audience of the Holborn well not change it kind of add to it that's I guess one of the aims as my you know having done my foundation in Bath back in the day when it was on Sydney Place um, you know we'd come into the Holborn Museum now and again but you know you kind of knew what you're going to get uh, and I think this is quite interesting to do something really curious that kind of upsets those expectations. In a way, you know, the, the, the thing about it being a film set or a Bridgerton thing, we've already kind of stepped in amongst that a little bit because it's not the perfect selfie anymore at the front of the building. Um, I think already that tickles me a little bit, that idea. So, um, yeah, we shall see. But I think that was, again, um, working with Will, that was you know the, the guys in the curatorial team that seen previous projects they could see that potential to use this place as a backdrop and how effective that might be uh, you know you, you're seeing work without even having to go into the place is is quite a friendly gesture i think to begin with <laughs>